Hello everybody, Sirs Kristan Bull here with another episode of Kristan Builds? No, I'm not going to call it that. That's too cheesy even for me. It is quite simply, let's build a fantasy village. And in today's episode, we are going to be building the Guards Outpost. In the last episode, we built the Botanist Tower, looming there so beautifully behind me. And the vines, you can still see, have grown quite a bit. They actually continue to grow through the entire episode. So keep an eye on the background for that, because it looks quite cool. But that's not the focus of today's episode. The focus is the Guards Outpost, which is actually going to be a collection of two buildings. So here I placed down some pillars that you can see which, which of the foundations that I laid out earlier I'm going to be using. One of them is going to be a guard's hall or a guard's barracks, and the other is going to be a watchtower. Now because the buildings share a function for guarding the city, one is going to house the guards and one is going to be an area for the guards to watch for crime, I want them to be linked, but I don't want them to be linked on the outside at street level. Therefore, the only way to go is down. I build a basement area or a cellar area for both of the buildings and then I cover it over except for an area for some stairs and a ladder. And you can see me popping in and out from underground there just to prove that the buildings are linked. Now you're not going to see that from street level, but uh, Sirs and I are probably going to turn this into an adventure map or maybe do a series in this town later. So. We want the buildings to actually be somewhat functional. Anyway, I'm going to start by working on the larger building, which is going to be the guards hall or the guards barracks. It's going to be an area where the guards either can spend some recreational time off duty. Maybe in the front entry there, there's a reception desk where there's a guard posted to receive complaints or notices from the village's citizens. And while I'm using the dark wood planks that I used in the Botanist Tower for the majority of both of these buildings, you see that I've gone and I've put in some log supports for both the floors and eventually the roof. And the reason for that is I want A, both of these buildings to share a common theme between each other to show that they're connected, but also, I want to share a common theme throughout the town, like I mentioned in the last episode. So that's why I've used the same color of wood. I may not always use the same color of wood for every building, just to make sure that there's a little bit of variety in the town, in the village. But for now, we're going to use some of the same common factors that I used in the Botanist Tower, which is that dark wood planks and cobblestone. So I've got a foundation built. For both of the buildings, we get to see the general shape they're taking. Throw up some more of those glowstone lamps, which look really cool in this texture pack, on the front of the watchtower. And here we go, I'm adding in to the front of both buildings the same cobblestone fences that I had on the botanist tower. Just again to carry the theme throughout the town. Continue to go up on both buildings. Now, the guards hall, I don't want to be too tall, so this is actually going to be the final floor for this building. And I decided because of that, I want to have a unique separation. A, to split up the look of all that dark wood, and B, just to identify that this is a two-story home. So I go to the roof, and I repeat those large log supports on the top of this building as well. throw in a door there because I'm going to bring out a balcony and I started building it with cobblestone using some half slabs so that I can ensure that you could still exit that door without having to raise the second level of the building but I go back and I change that because like I mentioned with the botanist tower some of the aspects of these builds I still want to try and keep as if it was realistic. So there's not a huge support for that balcony. I didn't want it to be something heavy like cobblestone. So I just changed it to wood. And I break out some of those blocks to make sure that the doorway there is functional and you can actually walk outside in and out from the balcony. Throw up some windows and put some lighting inside. 
put on a door. And now we're gonna go ahead and throw up some trap doors. A as decoration and B as a little bit of a overhang for both the windows and the door. And now we're gonna put a roof on the guards' barracks. So I'm just using the same oak wood steps that I used in the botanist tower and various other places in the build to build the roof here. I will actually probably go back and change that either to a darker wood or possibly to some red nether brick stairs. And the only reason for that is during the daytime especially, the light oak wood planks blend in a little bit. And while the roof actually looks really cool at the end of this build, I want to make sure that it doesn't wash away between the two tall towers. So I'm probably just going to change it to a darker wood to make sure that the roof stands out as sort of the focal point of the guards' barracks. And there you go, I finished the majority of the roof there, the main shape. It's not complete, I do add on to it. I flesh it out a little bit more near the end of the episode, but that's the main shape. In fact, that's the main shape of the guards' barracks in general. So I decide to add some lighting as the sun falls with some more of those glowstone lamps. And now interestingly here, I remove it because I didn't think it looked right. And then I decide, oh, I better check to make sure I can actually get through the doorway with the lamp that low. Wish I can. So I move it back to where I originally had it. And the funny thing is when I, when I edit the video, I see things like that a lot of the time that I went back and changed and I go, it was so obvious to me the first time that it looked good, but it, it's completely different when you're building it and when you're just looking at it from afar. So it just shows that uh, when you're doing builds like this, it's always it's good to remember that you're going to have to break things, redo them, replace them, try them in several different variations until you get the one that looks best and the one you like best. And sometimes you won't even realize that the one you liked best was the one you liked best until you tried a few other variations and saw that they didn't work. We move over to the tower, just throwing in some windows so I can get the basic shape going. The guard's watchtower there. Lighting it up a little bit on the inside just so I can see what I'm doing and you can see a bit better yourself. So we continue the big log supports throughout every level of the watchtower. Now I just begin to etch away. As usual, when you're doing a Minecraft build, you want to try to prevent things from being too blocky. Everything is a square in Minecraft, but you can still do little details like this to add depth and variation to a building. So already that building looks quite shapely instead of the rectangular block that was shooting to the sky at the beginning. And I'm going ahead and putting in some upside down cobblestone steps. Again, for color, to show a split where the different levels are, and just to add a bit more dimension. This texture pack actually has some really cool different textures for blocks that are medieval themed. Things like crates and those quartz blocks there are actually designed to look like panels, medieval panels. So I tested with some of those in the front of the buildings. And just decide to put a bit of variation on the guard's barracks, the front of that, because it's a wider building. So I had a bit of room to play around with it and make it look a little bit different. And at the end of the day, I decided to remove those blocks, the quartz blocks and the crates, because they didn't look right. And I just went back to the grass blocks with some plants on them that I used in the botanist tower. I threw up some ladders. I was trying to go for something that gave off a military theme, a military feel, but I, I didn't like it at the end of the day, so I removed the ladders there. And you see, I filled in those places where I etched out the corners on the watchtower with mossy cobble fence. And even though I'm filling in a spot, because I'm filling it in with a block that has a bit of depth and you can still see around, it adds even more dimension to the building. 
playing around with some window treatments here. Again, to prevent the tower from looking flat. And what I end up going with is just some upside down cobble steps, some cobble half slabs, and then some fence posts around the outside of the windows. And the nice thing about the little details like this, as I add on those lamps to light up the front, is that while the two buildings have some of the same themes, those log pillar supports being the main ones, they still both have their own unique identity. So I shuffled around with those lamps, another example of going back 10 different times to see how you like something. And you can see here, I ended up not using them at all. This is actually where I went back to the guards barracks and I thought the roof needed something to make it stand out a little bit. Again, I was worried about the barracks being washed away and hidden in between the two towers. So I added these peaks and points to either end of the roof on the building because sometimes in a build, when you're looking at the buildings from the front so often, you lose, you lose realization of the fact that these are three-dimensional buildings. So when I moved the camera angle and I saw the building from this angle, I saw that the, the barracks was very flat in between these two buildings. And it's amazing how just adding those two peaks on either end of the roof makes the house stand out a lot more. And I think if I do change the roof color to a darker wood or to nether brick stairs, it'll pop even more and those peaks will look really cool. It kind of reminds me of like a Norse longhouse right now. Moving to the top of the guard's watchtower, I'm throwing down some cobble trim around the top to differentiate from the rest of the, of the tower. And I'm building out with some upside down cobble stairs because this is where I'm gonna build the platform that the guards are gonna spend a lot of their day on when they're overlooking the town looking for crime or in, in the worst case scenario, defending the town against invaders putting up some wood fences as supports and capping them off with cobblestone fence, and then going back down with the wood fence posts and adding a trim around the base of the tower's top platform, just for detail and just for dimension. Always remember those little details to add personality to builds. And here we go. Topping off the guard's tower with the red peaked nether brick roof and a really cool cross-hatch log support. So, while the botanist tower had these nice, leafy, open, uh, hatched roof to the top, the guard's tower needed something solid, because those guards are going to be up there for a long time. And while the botanist may have wanted to let some rain and moisture down for her plants, I don't think the guards are going to appreciate getting soaked in the rain. So I had that roof of the watchtower finished, but I realized it looked far too shallow, so I just decided to raise it up. And the reason is, I want to make sure that with two towers in so close proximity to each other, they don't look like the same height, and one of them doesn't diminish the other. So A, it was too short with the previous roof, and B, the botanist tower really diminished the look of the guard's watchtower. So now because they both have a slightly different shape, and they're at different levels. They both keep their own unique look and neither of them really washes away because of the other one. With that peaked roof on that tower, it really actually reminds me of one of the watchtowers from Age of Empires 2. Going in here, adding some fence posts, hanging down from either corner the guard's watchtower and tipping them off with lanterns, just more of those glowstone lamps. So we can add unique flair to the tower and as usual, some dynamic lighting to the village. And now as we look below, I'm just gonna go in and add some final touches. Look at that, you can see how much those vines have grown on the botanist tower like a weed. 
I love things like that that continue to add personality over time. So I went back to the ladder theme and after trying to use ladders all over the place in this build, I end up using them just in one tiny spot, but I do think it enhances it. I think it looks interesting. Finish off the roof by going underneath and just leveling out with those upside down oak wood stairs. Now you can't see what I'm doing here, but as we zoom out, I added some detail to the balcony on the barracks with some blue banners. And now I'm throwing down some different blocks in the front entryway of the barracks to add a bit of variety. So we've got a chest there and a trough full of water. Maybe if the guards stop by with their horses, they need to water their horses before they do another patrol around the town. And it's funny, just adding those wood stairs at the base of the watchtower make it flare out a little bit at the bottom and add a lot of dimension to the tower. So, there you have it. Let's zoom out and get some better shots of the guard's outpost. Wow, isn't it amazing how quickly the village has taken shape? We've only built three buildings and already the town has a personality and a life of its own. It's amazing how quickly builds like this can grow. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode and until next time, bye!